we're gonna learn about how to use the new create a GPT feature inside ChatGPT. Now, actually, I got to hear about this about a week before OpenAI even announced it, and that is because I found that they leaked the system prompt accidentally inside my ChatGPT account. I searched on X when I saw this, and it looks like I'm the only person who actually noticed this. When it did come out, I was so excited because not only is it gonna help me and you build with AI even easier, but it's also embodying the idea that I've been talking about throughout this course, and that is building your own AI team. So in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to build a GPT, why you would want to build a GPT, and what it can do to help grow your business. So as an example here, I'm going to say that I want to build a video script reviewer. All right, and it came up with a name. I'm gonna just say that that sounds good. You see here on the right side, it also generated some example prompts. Now what it's doing is generating a profile picture. It's kind of cool that it uses the Dolly image creation to generate an AI image based on what it knows about what I'm building. And of course you can upload your own image as well, but it's neat to see what it makes here and then ask it to refine and kind of try out a couple different images. For now, I'm gonna say that sounds good or looks good. Right now it's asking me to clarify the role and for this specifically, I don't want it to be for movie scripts, I want it to be for YouTube scripts. Now it's asking about the specific elements that I wanna emphasize or avoid in its reviews. And I think that in this case, I want it to kind of list out different types of engagement techniques and then review how my video script might be handling those. So it would be great to get like a one out of 10 rating and then be able to upload a revision to that script and see how that rating might change or improve. All right, now it's asking about the communication style, if it should have a certain tone in its responses, be more formal and analytical or more casual. Um, I think that um, casual and approachable to a beginner is good. All right, and now it's all set up for us and it's letting us know we can try it out here on the right to see how it works. And I like this design where it's got a good kind of feedback loop that you can start building it test it out, and then ask the GPT builder to help refine it for you on the left side as well. One of the things that I didn't really put into this yet was it did mention about areas to avoid, and I didn't really put in too much detail there, but what you'll wanna do is when you're building a GPT yourself, if you plan on sharing this with other people, you want to not only describe what it should do and how it should act, but also the things that it shouldn't do and whatever constraints you have, because you know how to communicate with the GPT and what its purpose is for, but somebody else using it may not know that exactly. So you wanna be able to have some kind of response that it can give the person when they ask it to do something that it's not designed to do and maybe to show the person what things it can help them with so that way they can get a better use of it. But instead of trying it out here, what I really wanna do is look at the configure tab now and we can see what it built here and understand how we can then build our own from scratch. So we've got the name, we've got the description. This is just what you would see for your reference to be able to know if you wanna pick this GPT or not. The instructions here are the important part. That is the actual prompt that the GPT builder has helped to write for us. And so if you have a custom prompt that you've written in the past, if you have one that you're writing right now, this is where you would be pasting that. And this is not too detailed here. The kind of prompts that we're going to be writing are probably going to have a lot more detail and refinement to them as far as the content of the way we want the AI to act and respond. Next, we've got the conversation starters. These can be edited um, or added to, and this is what you see here to start everything off. And the most powerful thing now is the knowledge, capabilities, and actions. Knowledge is probably going to be the one that you use the most, and this is where you can upload any files of your content. It could be text files, markdown files, a PDF um, code, the GPT will be able to reference this in order to provide answers. So imagine if you wanted to build your own customer support chatbot and you had all of this information already on your website, you could take all of that, upload it in a text file, and now have somebody ask a question and the GPT will be able to search that text file and then find an answer. So before, this is what I'm saying, you had to be either a developer or pay some kind of monthly service to be able to build something like this. And now you can do it in a matter of minutes. Next is we've got the capabilities. We've got the web browsing, 
Dolly image generation or code interpreter. So you can decide which of these, if any, you want your GPT to have access to. It could be helpful if you needed to get certain up-to-date information as part of its task that it has access to the web browser. The image generation is something that can be fun for more creative processes if you want it to be able to generate an image for some reason. And then the code interpreter is really powerful if you want to have this GPT either analyze data and maybe create something like a chart, maybe reformat a spreadsheet and give you a download link to that new spreadsheet, or do different things where it can create code to create different almost areas of your interface in order to show people who are using it. So an example of this is I saw somebody made a gift creator GPT where it will use Dolly to generate this sheet of these different animation points of slides. And then the code interpreter will write code to actually slice up the image into like eight evenly distributed slides and then make that an animated GIF. Now it wouldn't be perfect. So it had like a mode where you could go and adjust those slides to say exactly where the slices are based on what you saw on the image. But that's a, an interesting uh, use case there because you don't have to know how to write the code to slice up an image and turn it into a GIF. That's something that the GPT can do on its own just by you describing that this is something it should do. Next is being able to maybe like make a report. So let's say you have all this different data and you would really wanna be able to see a chart about what that data looks like. Instead of having to figure out formulas in Excel or something like this, you can use the code interpreter to have the GPT actually create these charts for you. Then finally, we've got the actions. That's a bit more complicated, but this is where you can connect this GPT to a third-party service. So OpenAI demoed that an example of having the GPT have a connection to like a Smart Lights and a Spotify playlist to be able to actually adjust things or play music in your home uh, based on what you said to it. And you could have this connect to other business services or things like that that you might use as well in order to have it do something. But for most people, I think the most powerful point is having this prompt that you describe how the GPT is going to work and then having your own custom knowledge that the GPT can access so you can create this additional teammate in a matter of minutes. After ChatGPT was released, all of these different chat with your data type products started popping up. And what I mean by that were the types of tools where you could give it your data and you could build your own AI support chatbot or build your own chatbot that would kind of act and talk like you maybe even just build a chatbot that would have your information so you could talk to it and kind of figure out the things that you've said. So if you wanted to build one of these in the past, you had to either be a developer or pay one of these services some kind of monthly fee to be able to build this chatbot. Now with the create a GPT feature, you can build this yourself in a couple minutes. You don't have to be a developer and it doesn't cost anything except having a ChatGPT Plus account. So I'm going to show you how you can start building your team of GPTs today. What you just saw is a sample lesson from our new course, AI Elevate. Now, AI Elevate is the first course teaching you how to build custom GPTs of your own so you can better leverage AI in your business. And it's not only a course, we also included a number of custom GPTs that we built along with it. One of the challenges that I know entrepreneurs and creators have is even figuring out what can AI even do to assist you. So one of these GPTs, you can tell it what you need help with, and it will break that down into a list of things that AI can actually assist with. And then when you pick one of them, it will use our prompt writing structure to actually write the prompt for you. Then when you're refining that prompt to get it to work exactly the way that you want, we built another GPT that will give you guidance and recommendations to better refine your prompt so it works best for you. If you wanna check it out for yourself, the course is only $99 and includes these custom GPTs along with it. You can find the link down below in the description. Can't wait to see what you build with AI.